if you look at this, everything's messed up, right? You have all of these hyper intense bony changes. That's arthritis. That's basically spondylosis. You have discs that are collapsing on the, onto themselves. You have end plates that are collapsing and you have, you can see the canal is pinched in at the disc spaces because of herniated discs. So this is a patient that has probably very severe back pain. They probably have significant pain in their legs from nerve compression. And you could look at this MRI and you say, well, what the heck am I supposed to do? And if you get 10 spine surgeons, some orthopedic surgeons, some neurosurgeons, you're going to get 10 different ideas for what to do for a spine that looks like this. And unfortunately, with the obesity epidemic in this country, this is what most spines look like. One option, if it's a fairly healthy patient, is you can do a huge operation and realign and fuse and decompress everything. That's the most definitive treatment. Sometimes that's the right way to go. Other times, the best thing to do for the patient is the smallest, least invasive footprint. So what's tricky for this multi-level disease, these patients are, like I said, they're going to have the back pain, radicular uh, pain, claudication, which we're going to talk about in a second. And you really need to rely on your exam and your history now. Figure out, out of all of these problems in the spine, which one is the actual trigger for their pain or their deficit. And if you can just fix that, you can make the patient pretty happy without giving them an enormous operation. So again, for this problem, you wanna look at the nerves, look at the MRI, get a myelogram if they can't get the MRI. And the X-ray helps to tell you what's unstable here. Are the bones moving on top of each other? Because if they are, then you really need a fusion. You can't do a decompression at an unstable level because you take instability and you're just making it worse by drilling off bone. But if you can get a pain management doctor to put a needle around a specific nerve, numb it up, and the patient says they're happy, then you decompress one nerve. And that just means drilling the bone and taking the disc material around the one nerve. And that may give you a good result. So here we're talking about claudication. So you guys probably covered this a few times in different med school uh, modules. Claudication, there's two kinds, neurogenic and vascular. And unfortunately, they have very, very similar symptoms. And that can be a non-dermatomal, non-specific burning in the legs, can be unilateral or bilateral, that is accompanied by weakness. And these symptoms, these problems, get worse with walking and exertion. So this is kind of a busy slide here. But just to give you a little bit of clarity, for neurogenic claudication, sometimes it's positional. If you lean forward, the neuroforamina actually open up a little bit more. And if you stretch backward, they tighten up and the symptoms get worse. So one classic example is if somebody has neurogenic claudication, they can bike very well. If it's a stationary bike, they can exert themselves and do well, no problem. If it's vascular, that's a blood supply issue. It doesn't matter what position you're in. As long as you're exerting yourself, you're going to have the symptoms. And that's, aside from all of these other different characteristics to try to memorize for, for standardized tests, which one causes which, what matters the most when you're examining a real patient is, do they get positional relief? If the answer is yes, you're thinking neurogenic. And if it's no, you're thinking vascular. And as, a, as future neurosurgeons, your ability in the clinic to determine if a patient has normal or diminished pulses in their lower extremities, you're going to have to rely on someone else for that because that's not something that's going to be in your skill set. But again, there will be pulse and blood supply uh, and blood flow issues in the, the lower extremities, but that's not going to be your responsibility to figure that out as a neurosurgeon. Everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.